Dear Funko, if you make vinyl pops as Chuck E. Cheese characters, if you make Chuck E. Cheese character vinyl pops, I will buy them all and love you forever. Hugs and kisses, Lauren Stone, toy journalist. Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Stone with Toy Wizards, that's toy-wizards.com, and I'm here for an unboxing review, and today's items were brought to us by Funko! So big thank you to Funko for providing us some awesome items for us to check out and sort of review. You're going to see. We're going to mostly go over them. So... Last year, I received notification that Funko Games had officially launched. They started with their Funkoverse game, which is a tabletop action strategy game with these adorable little, like, two and a half inch pop vinyl figures that come with each game. I think two to four figures that come with the game, depending on the difficulty, how many players can, you know, jump into the action. So they launched with Funkovers. I did an entire interview with the Funko team at San Diego Comic Con 2019. They discussed Funkovers. They discussed the acquisition of a smaller game publisher that was in Washington, I want to say. So I'm very, very familiar with the properties that Ravensburger is playing with. So it's really interesting to see what Funko is working on that's not just here's a DC franchise and here's a pop or here's the Golden Girls game and here's a pop or the Harry Potter game. So it feels like even though, of course, these are all extracurricular franchises, it always feels like it's very Funko-centric because that pop toy is so iconic. I hope that makes sense. In this box here, this these are not Funkoverse like pop games. So it's really interesting. And the reason I bring up Ravensburger is because I know some of the franchises they've tapped into, like Disney's Haunted Mansion, Disney's Villains, Back to the Future. It's interesting to see that some of that stuff are in these boxes. So where we have these new games coming from Ravensburger, we have comparable games coming from Funko. Enough of my talking, let's dive in. We'll take a look at the boxes look at some of the descriptions, and if you guys are interested, I will make sure I link to where you can purchase all of these games. I can't, I can't do a game review like nine times. <laughs> I always feel really, really bad when I accept games for review because it's just me. <laughs> My kids are really young. I don't have anyone to play with. And even if I did set up a board game, like, I feel like my last inclination would be like, hold on, guys, I got to take pictures now, and we're going to review this game. Like, I just want to be in the game. I want to be immersed. So that's kind of... <laughs> Let's get started. First in the box, Five Nights at Freddy's Survive Till 6 a.m. Game. I will be really direct. Other than the name, Five Nights at Freddy's, and I recognize the characters, like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Because I'm old. But I do like that it looks like a pizza box. Obviously, it conjures um, images of the Showtime pizza. You know, I'm a big Chuck E. Cheese dork. I was a Chuck E. Cheese kid. I loved that Showtime pizza aesthetic. <laughs> I, I fed right into it. I have um, vinyl. I'm pointing. I'm pointing like you know what I'm pointing at. I have vinyl Chuck E. Cheese characters on my desk. Like, in addition to McDonald's characters. Like, if Funko... Ha, dear Funko... If you make vinyl pops as Chuck E. Cheese characters, if you make Chuck E. Cheese character vinyl pops, I will buy them all and love you forever. Hugs and kisses, Lauren Stone, toy journalist. Alright, so what do we have here? Five Nights at Freddy game. Ages 13 plus? One to two, one to two players? And it's a 20 minute game. Damn, this is right up my alley. Can you survive the night shift at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza? As a newly hired security guard, it's your duty to keep an eye on the security cameras and make sure nothing goes wrong. Keep alert to movements in the dark, but be wary of using your limited power for lights and doors. 
Can you keep the animatronics out of your office? Or will you be their next victim? It's high tension, jump scare fun in this spooky strategy game. Damn. That sounds like fun, actually. One player? I'm gonna play this. Alone. It'll be great. Actually, I've never played a solo board game. I'm actually very curious. Let's keep going. Ah. Uh, Godzilla. Tokyo Clash strategy game. Look at that box art, dude. This is gorgeous. Hyper turbo power to the max, man. I love it. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Tons of like Japanese, right? They just, they leaned. They leaned the leaned into it. This is a cool, cool box. And I know that Scott's going to battle me for it. It's yours, Scotty. You can have it. All right. So this is ages 10 plus two to four players and that's just, again it's a strategy game ultimate battle for kaiju dominance choose from four iconic movie kaiju godzilla king Ghidorah, mothra or megalon and prepare for maximum mayhem build a different vision of the classic 1960s tokyo cityscape each time you play using your modular tiles gain power by throwing trains tanks battleships and enemy kaiju into buildings and at other kaiju <laughs> i love it like when they pick up the costumes and throw them at each other yes master your kaiju's unique combat style to deal to deal devastating attacks and become king of the monsters that's right just dude 13 buildings here's again what the characters look like there they all are. I like those. I wonder what they're made of. It's like plastic, hard plastic, or if it's soft, or what those tokens are made of. This looks like a quality game. Super badass. Back to the future. Back in time. Again, this intrigues me because I know that the um, Ravensburger Back to the Future game also just came out. So, you know, we have these two kind of side by side. It includes DeLorean Time Machine and Seven Miniatures. This is seven miniatures. How many people is this for? Ages 10 plus, two to four players. All right, what do we got? Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Wait a minute, Doc. There, this, that's my Marty. The photo of the McFly family is slowly fading. It's 1955, and you're wrapped up in a time paradox with Biff, Lorraine, George, and Doc Brown. Cooperate to move around Hill Valley to get the DeLorean ready, avoid Biff and his gang, help George and Lorraine fall in love, and crank the DeLorean up to 88 miles per hour. All just in time for the lightning to strike the clock tower, sending you back to the future. I mean, it hits all the... It, it checks all the boxes. Like, that's, that's what happens in the movie. Like, that's, that's our gimmick. Next, we have... The Haunted Mansion, Call of the Spirits game. Very friendly art. The art is cute. Um, it's a little less spooky. But I say spooky lightly because, you know. These are great games, guys. Age is 8 plus, so that means it's for me. <laughs> Two to six players. Let, let's read our premise. Serpents and spiders. Tale of a rat. Call in the spirits wherever they're at. Disney's beloved The Haunted Mansion comes to life in this ghostly game of spooky spirits. Roam the endless hallway in order to contact the happy haunts that reside in the mysterious manor's many rooms. Enlist the help of Madame Leota in the seance room, but avoid the hitchhiking ghosts who move around the mansion haunting visitors with their ghastly appearance. Become too haunted. <laughs> And you might just end up becoming the mansion's next resident. <gasps> I get you haunted. I'm always I'm laughing because I'm always saying that. Like, like if something is like just kind of too weird, I'm always like, oh, it's too haunted. It's too haunted. Like, oh my God, can't do that. It's too haunted. <laughs> so it's just kind of jargon that I use. So I'm, I'm just overly amused right now. I'm reading that. And all I'm craving is to hear Eleanor Adley's voice. That's the biggest thing that bothers me at Disneyland when it's Christmas time in the Haunted Mansion and they change the whole shtick to um, The Nightmare Before Christmas. That amazing recording of Eleanor Adley, who did the voice of Lady Tremaine, the wicked stepmother, 
in Cinderella. So, I mean, powerful voice ha Doth has this woman. And for them to change it at any point in the year just for a just for a Christmas gimmick, it just it just hits me right in the noir. I, I I'm so upset when that happens. I just I just really I really love I really like the classics. <laughs> Reading the back of that box, now I'm craving like a 1995 Casper the board game. <laughs> Cause like the haunted ghost, like the three uncles. Um, in my mind, I'm a little bit of a Kerrigan. <laughs> Dead! <laughs> Alright. <laughs> this is so cute. I can't believe Funko did this. It's Pop-Tarts! The game! Look how cute this is! It is fast-paced, flavor-filled fun. I'm seeing numbers, and I'm wondering if this is Uno. <laughs> Alright, ages 13 plus? What's happening in this game? What's happening in here that we're 13 plus? Two to six players. Race to grab the most Pop-Tarts. A parade of Pop-Tarts lines up between the freezer and the toaster. Who keeps Pop-Tarts in the freezer? Aren't those Pillsbury toaster pastries? No, 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 now I have too many questions about people. Do any of you guys, do any of you guys keep Pop-Tarts in the freezer? I've literally never heard of that. They're cookies. They're jam-filled cookies! What? I, I don't know if I can read on. Try again. That was tough. A parade of Pop-Tarts lines up between the freezer and the toaster, and it's up to you to snag the ones you want. Play action cards, create delicious combos, and move cards to get your favorite Pop-Tarts into prime chomping positions. The first player to eat the most points wins. So what about that is 13 plus? Like, casual gluttony is for teenagers? Like, what is this? I'm so confused. We might have to do, like, a follow-up video where we're just playing this for a while because I don't understand what's happening. One, you don't put Pop-Tarts in the freezer. Second, I really like this throwback late 80s packaging because when I was a kid, here, Pop-Tart boxes were white. And they had the text, very simple, and then they had a picture of the pastry. My favorite has always been the strawberry with those rainbow sprinkles. Those sprinkles look just like the little bead spokes things that I put on my bike. They were really pretty. <laughs> I felt like I was eating star sprinkles from Rainbow Bright. I love the s'mores one. Let me <laughs> clarify real. I know we're talking about Funko and games, and Funko's going to be like, why did we send games to this lunatic? <laughs> but I just want to talk about Pop-Tarts for a minute, if that's okay. My god, the s'mores ones, man. Oh, just, just, like, oh my god. And the brown sugar ones, dude. I like the blueberry ones, which is what this box is conjuring for me. I actually do like the blueberry ones. I like the cherry ones. The only ones I don't like, like, I would never eat the ones, the strawberries that are not frosted. Like, you know what I used to do? You know how I would eat a Pop-Tart because I'm weird? I don't, I don't know if other people do this too. So <laughs> I would bite around the edges. Nom, 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 nom. And then I would slide the frosted top from the bottom. So I'd have this bottom, this cookie, plain, with jam on the other side. And I'd eat that. And then I would fat kid save the top portion, which would have the frosting and the sprinkles and a little bit of jam left on the back or the brown sugar filling or the marshmallow chocolate or whatever flavor I was eating. Oh my god, the s'mores one had like a graham cracker croissant. <laughs> to quote one of my favorite movies, Scary Movie 2, I don't know what the hell this is, but I like it anyway. Back and forth. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am just too amused. So that's all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to take a look at these Funko games. I wanted to do this very mild unboxing with you. I'm going to link all of these games where you can get them. Big thank you to Funko for kicking me down with a whole bunch of games, but this is a lot of game to get through and I'm very, very grateful. So thank you again for hanging out with me. I'm Lauren Stone with Toy Wizards. That's toy-wizards.com. Visit our site daily for toy news, reviews, articles, listicles, snarticles, editorials, opinion pieces, and everything you can want in the toy world, toy news, and apparently, games. So we'll catch you guys soon. Be safe, collect, have fun and enjoy your everything. Your everything? Enjoy your Pop-Tarts! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> so that's why we're
doing an unboxing. Now you know more. And so, you know, Funko or Raven's Burgers or Big Potato or any of the companies that send me games are going to be like, you bitch. 